Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and today we're here to answer the question, is the world ready for generating Airtable formulas with AI? An interesting question. To give some historical context, I'd say about six months ago, there was an individual who released a tool called Excel Formula Bot, and in it, they wanted to use natural language processing to be able to spit out Excel and Google Sheets formulas. Genius idea took off like wildfire. People are typing in and describing what they want a formula to do. It finds and crafts that formula based on their natural language. So this is something that I'm pretty sure this individual has deals with Microsoft and tons of people are using it. It's now a subscription service. And so that kind of sets the stage for what's happening now in the Airtable space. About a week ago, there was an individual who posted in the Airtable subreddit and just to be transparent, a lot of people weren't exactly happy with some of the optics around the marketing side. In order to use this website, you do have to put in your email address. And I think there were some questions about why one would need to do that. But in any case, I think this is worth giving it a try. You know, use a throwaway email address if you need to, but I'm excited about the potential of this. So this individual's tool they called Excel Formulator. Obviously, it seems very similar to Excel Formula Bot. So I'm hoping that they crafted the IP and that this is theirs. But without any further ado, let's hop into the tool. I just want to show you first, I created a quick base, just a single table, essentially simulating some sales data as if we had a CRM. So we've got a field for amount, field for pipeline stage. We've got a close date on here. And then we're going to try to build some formulas. Let's start off with something pretty easy. The pipeline stage is closed one, display amount. So let's say we're trying to track closed one revenue and we want to roll that up to something else. First, we'd make our formula field here. And this looks pretty straightforward. Let's plug it back into our table. And that's doing exactly what we want. We've got closed one and the qualification ones aren't doing it. So our first test passes. Okay, now let's try something with dates. So maybe we'll take out this condition. We'll still do a single condition. So we'll say if the, what did we call that date? The close date, of course. If the close date is in 2022. I'm curious how this will handle it. If close dates in 2022, display amount. Hmm, so I don't think this is going to work because just saying close date 2022 makes it look like it is a string or text field, which in fact it is not. So let's test it out here. And I don't think we're going to get the results that we are looking for. Yep, so that doesn't work for us. Okay, that could be a user thing. Maybe we want to specify a little bit more. If close date is in, what if we said calendar year 2022? So this is interesting. It now, us, it now realizes it's a date time. I'll plug this in. And you might be thinking that this is working. However, it's not, it, I mean, this is including anything beyond January 1st of 2022. So I've got this set up and I intentionally selected these dates because I wanted to try to see if we could throw it for a loop. So this one is past 2022 and it's still including it. So I'd give this one kind of a 50-50 here. I mean, technically, it's anything beyond that, but if you have any dates in the future, that's not going to account for that appropriately. So my guess is we'd have to get more specific here. So if the close date is, let's try between, rather than saying if close date is before this and if close date is after that, let's say between. Close date is between January 1st, 2022 and December 31st, 2022, display amount. Okay, 
and we'll stick this in again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought would happen. So normally when you're doing a formula with an if statement, you've got a condition. And then after that comma, you need to say if that condition evaluates to true or if that expression evaluates to true, then we display this. Well, this is still trying to use the and logic here, which doesn't make any sense. And this is what would display if it's false. So the reason we're getting this is because it's trying to put logic where it really should just give us a display value. So that's a little bit of a bummer that it can't do that. Now, what if we get really specific and say if close date is after January 1st, 2022, and close date is before, let's see what this does. Okay, and it looks like we're getting a nested statement here, which makes that interesting. Okay, so I think we have it now yielding the results we want it to. Let's just take a look at what that is. So if the close date is greater than that, and that evaluates to true, now we're giving it the second condition, and then we're displaying them out. Yeah, so this one worked. So this was successful. To me, this is forcing the user to be a little bit wordy and verbose, it's expecting that the user's already thinking about this logically. I want to try something totally different for a second. I had an example for our sales CRM where I was extracting the domain from an email address. I should say this column, email domain. And I was using write and the length of it and finding that at symbol to do it. I'm curious what this is going to spit out, but I want to put it through its paces. So let's check this out. Okay. Pull domain from email. Oh my goodness. This is really interesting. So it seems like it's got a decent knowledge of regular expression because I think this is going to work. Huh. All right. So let's create a formula field here. And we'll call this domain2. And we'll stick in our formula. Yeah. This was able to do it. So a regular expression. So we get mixed up on dates, but we can do a regular expression. That's fascinating. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm going to have to test this some more, but. Really excited to see that. So I, I don't know if you're feeling the same way as me. I, I'd be curious to hear down in the comments below from what you've seen. How are you feeling about this? Is this exciting enough where you think the, the value of the technology will be there? Or do you think you're going to spend more time spinning your wheels and error correcting for this? Because the part that I'd have to say is that I don't know if, if this individual's plan is that it's AI that keeps learning from itself. So as it gets more data, is it going to use that to improve? Or is it just trained at a single point in time and what you get is what you get? So I'll see if I can reach out to the creator to see kind of their, their plan on this. But definitely some promising technology, even though we've seen a couple instances where it doesn't totally stack up. Okay, the last thing I want to try here is another feature. So we were currently building formulas you can actually go the other way around with its explainer feature. You can drop in a formula and have it explain it to you in plain English. So to do this, I'm taking, I made a video the other night about how to pre-fill Airtable forms. And I wanna take just something really ugly, lots of encode URL components that I was doing to pre-fill an Airtable form. And let's plug this into the explainer. Oh, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> this formula is creating a URL link. Yep. That will pre-fill the contact ID, first name, last name, email, and phone fields with the corresponding information from the current record. It is also hiding the contact ID field. That is exactly what that is doing. So I'm pretty impressed. I'd love to hear what you think about this. I certainly need to test this some more, and I'm not exactly sure how often I'll be using it, but I think the fact that we're at this point with the technology is really promising. Let me know what you think in the comments below.